Hello everyone and welcome to episode 38 of the ITSM crowd. This week we've got a review of the conference season, so we've got some updates from four ITSMF conferences. We've got news about Scion Professional, we've got news about Verizon, we've got news about the ITIL update. So we've got a packed episode. The first thing I'm going to do is ask our guests to introduce themselves. So Michelle, if you want to say hello first. Hi folks, so my name is Michelle Major Goldsmith. I'm from Kinetic IT in Australia, although I'm still in Manchester this morning after the uh, ITSM uh, conference. Um, I've been working with Claire on uh, Verizon and the Sign Professional Group. Thank you very much. And Simon? Um, yep, Simon Dorst, also from Kinetic IT in Perth, Australia, also still in Manchester, recovering from the ITSM 17 conference and absorbing all the news. Yeah, so you'll, you'll notice that I'm in a different venue to usual as well. So Michelle, Simon and I are actually in different rooms in the same hotel. So we're hoping the, the Wi-Fi will stay strong um, and we'll, we'll cope with this. My name's Claire Agata. I'm the lead tutor for ITSM Zone. I'm going to be the host for today's session. And if you are watching us live, I can see there's a few of you. If you've got any questions, if you want to put them on Twitter, Use the hashtag ITSM crowd and we'll keep an eye on Twitter during the broadcast. So if there's anything that you'd like to know, anything you want to ask Simon and Michelle or myself, please do that and we will keep an eye and we'll, um, we will get to that during the next 30 minutes. So this year has been an interesting year in the world of service management. Personally, I've been um, working with the team on the Scion Professional content. So Simon and Michelle are going to give us some more information about that soon. But I've also been the chief architect on the Verizon project. And Verizon, if you've not heard about it so far, is a new approach to service management, which has been developed to help us all as service management professionals make sense of the new frameworks and practices and standards that we're all expected to work with these days. So Verizon looks at what we're trying to achieve with our products and services from a business level and then looks at how we can draw on things like ITIL, SIAM, DevOps, Lean, Agile, all of these things that are out there, how we can pick um, the bits of them that we need in order to get the results that we want. There's a launch webinar which is available at verism.global and there is also the draft of the ebook has been launched now so you can access that via the Van Haren website, Van Haren are the uh, the publishing partners of IFDC, who are the organization behind Verizon. And as part of the, the Verizon launch, I've been on a bit of a world tour, I think it's safe to say. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is just kind of share a few thoughts from the, the conferences that I've attended before. Um, I, I invite Simon and Michelle in as well, and we'll talk about what we've seen this week at, at ITSMF UK. So the first conference that I attended was ITSMF Denmark, which was in Roskilde. This is a kind of a small and intimate conference, but it was a really friendly one, really nice to be there. And I think the, the kind of the top trend in Denmark really was Siam. So lots of presentations that focused on Siam, lots of interest in Siam. And it's great to see that service integration and management is, is really reaching a global audience. We also had a presentation there that focused on to kind of support DevOps and get ready for DevOps and make sure we're delivering the results that we need. So it was, um, it was good to see a really broad agenda there in, in Copenhagen. Back was Fusion, which is the joint conference between ITSMF USA and HDI much different in terms of scale, absolutely enormous conference, enormous hotel that it was hosted in. I um, I got my 10,000 steps in just running from room to room. But again, a real diverse set of topics. People were very, very interested in Verism. So we did a presentation there in a panel session and we got lots of questions about what this means for service management professionals. And it was um, it's just really nice to see how the, the, the US market is adopting these, these new ways of thinking and, and having an interest in, in areas like Verism. After the US then was off to ITSMF Japan. Japan was a, a different experience for me, I think, because most of the, the Japanese service management community 
you don't engage as much on social media so with the US team and the Denmark team we've already been chatting on Twitter but the the Japanese community is very much about the the face-to-face -face contact so it was um, it was brilliant to meet some of the the training companies that are working with Siam in the Japanese market again a lot of interest in Verism and speaking to Tamita San who's the chair of ITSMF Japan I think that market is very much looking for the new ways of working that the kind of the, the the top area of interest really at ITSMF Japan was in Siam because all of Tokyo is going through construction changes to get ready for the 2020 Olympics um, and we've been very lucky when we've been writing the Siam material to work with Atos who are the official IT partner for the Olympic Games so the service management community in Japan is, is really keen to talk to Atos to learn more about how they're using Siam in the Japanese market and see how all the different service providers who will engage with the Olympics and engage with Atos can actually benefit from understanding a little bit more about Siam. So back from Japan and this week was ITSMF UK so different venue this week we were in Manchester rather than London which is nice for northerners um, and I think Michelle, I'll, I'll ask you first of all for your kind of thoughts on the conference. Uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed the conference this year. It was a different format, so it was still a two-day event, but we didn't have the, uh, the normal awards ceremony that had been sort of disconnected earlier than in the year. But um, I think we had a really fantastic balance. I was pleased to see the sort of technical slant in terms of information about sort of cloud and artificial intelligence and stuff. Um, but then we also had a, you know, the framework mix, so there was um, information about De DevOps and Lean and Agile and Kinevin and of course Siam. Um, and we did a session on Siam uh, on the first day, which was fantastic, good fun. Uh, and then going on to sort of people, so it was lovely to see the softer side of IT being explored as well. Um, and also talk about sort of customer experience and user experience and how to do self-service correctly. So as I say, for me, the, the great part about the conference was the balance um, that was there this year across the scope and the range of things that, that were being talked about. Fab, thanks. And, and Simon, what were your observations? Uh, it's hard to follow there, but um, I think one of the observations is that DevOps and Agile are not new anymore, that they've become part of the service management world. Um, uh, the customer, I think this realization that the, uh, the the challenges that we are facing, the the digital transformation, the DevOps agile, and all those things means that we can't keep doing the same thing. So I think the timing of Verism and and the update of Vital potentially uh, the emerging of Siam is just showing that we are looking for new ways of dealing with what has become the reality. Um, and then that really came through in, in, in some of the uh, the presentations. Uh, I enjoyed some of the uh, the improvisation ones. Uh, unfortunately, we had a few speakers drop out, and and that actually caused a lot of interactive sessions. So I had an interactive session with Daniel Breston about measurements and metrics and KPIs around Siam and DevOps, um, and his take. But it was it was very interactive, which was good to see people participate and, and tell about their pain. Um, and the people aspect, a uh, very good session by Sally Blog on uh, reward and recognition, um, which is going away from, which is something that we uh, told in the SIME session as well, is moving away from the stick approach with the measurements and uh, penalizing, but instead looking for good behaviors and rewarding those. Uh, so, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it. That's good. It was. Um, it's a long way for you to come, so hopefully it's um, it's a good event. Um, you mentioned the the ITIL update there, Simon. That was um, it was announced when I was in in Fusion a couple of weeks ago over in the states. But tell us a little bit more about what you learned. Um, there, there wasn't uh, a lot of new things. The architect team was uh, mentioned, so apparently they've come together and starting. Uh, the roadmap is going to be released early. Uh, next year, but I think the key thing here is that Axlos has put out a call to anyone uh, to join their group, uh, they call it a closed group, uh, for people to suggest what could be done to contribute. How it exactly is going to pan out is still up there, um, so, but um, yeah, that's that's the big news there is the, uh, the, the stature of the architect team, the roadmap coming out and asking people to kind of join up and express their interest. Yeah, I mean, Michelle, what did you think about the ITIL announcement? 
Um, I think uh, everybody was uh, excited to, to hear something. You know, there's been discussion for a long time, so it was good um, to, to finally hear that. You know, there are but there's going to be some work happening. I like the fact that they're engaging in a collaborative approach. I think the community absolutely um, can drive some real value there in terms of contribution. So that's great. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how it transpires and what their development model is going to look like. Um, and Simon said, hopefully that will be revealed a little bit more in the early 2018. Yeah, I think it's um, it's exciting times for the service management industry at the moment. Mm. Obviously, Verism is very big news, um, but the ITIL update is, you know, that's also huge news as well. And I think it's something that people have been asking maybe not asking for, but asking whether it's going to happen for quite a long time. So it's good to start to see some information come out. Some of the names on the architect team, I think will look will look very familiar, particularly to those of us from the UK market. So we've got Barclay Ray there, um, Stuart Rance, who was the Resilia author as well. Global team as well. So representation from um, the US, from Mexico, from the Netherlands, from Japan. And I think you know that's that's really important to have that that global representation. And uh, I'm certain that with with people like Mauricio Corona on the team, that they'll get a good result. But yeah, there's there's more information about how to get involved on the on the Axelos website. You've both been involved with Verism as well. So we we did the Verism updates at the ITSMF UK conference. Michelle, you were part of the panel with myself and um, Suzanne Galletley. What do you feel the uh, the reaction has been to the Verizon launch? Um, a great deal of enthusiasm. So, you know, you've already said it was an exciting conference, both with Axelos and the launch of uh, Verizon. So lots of really great conversations with delegates asking questions about what does this mean, what will it look like, and I think I really enjoyed having the conversations that we're not trying to, you know, knock anybody off any perches. This is something about being able to understand how to use all of these best practices in the best way um, based on, you know, business need or project requirements. So it was great to have those conversations and allay some of those fears that we're not asking you to, to adopt something completely new and throw everything else away. We're saying this is about other best practices that are available and creating this sort of management mesh when you need to deliver a new service or design a new service uh, and you can look at all of the best practices and enabling practices out there you know what's the best thing to do right now so I enjoyed having those conversations and I think um, I spoke to you which then you will be asking about what oh. Um, yeah, to uh, to add on from there, I think it was really good to be able to share some of the content with Verism. Um, I think over the last couple of weeks, uh, some of the debates on, on, on LinkedIn, etc., have gone a little bit ethereal based on a name and another framework. So it was really good to be able to, to share the, the management mesh and the concepts around it so people get a much better feeling about how it fits and how it fits with their existing investments in, in, in tool and practices. So um, I, I'm looking forward to being able to have those more content-based conversations. Uh, and, and as the uh, accreditation comes out in the beginning of next year as well, to start working on how are we positioning this within the real world, within the organizations. But um, I think that was, that was a good outcome to be able to show the content and, and show what it is and how it's going to fit in. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. And I think the the biggest thing for me is, has been a lot of the, the speculation, certainly on social media, has, has been very much kind of positioning a, a Verism versus ITIL argument, which is really not how we uh, frame the Verism approach. So ITIL becomes one of the practices that an organisation can use in order to deliver services, but it, it's important that organisations can bring in elements of, of other management practices when they need to and it's that flexibility I think that that's going to make Verism um, successful and it was looking at the social media discussions during the conference um, during the panel session we said that you know Verism doesn't replace any investment that's been made in ITIL training within an organization or ITIL processes. It's actually a way of protecting that investment because you can look at what you've got, identify any gaps and then target 
other ways of working that will will add on to your existing service management processes and roles. So that, that concept of protecting the investment that's already been made, I think, is an important one. The, the Verizon roadmap is that the, the draft ebook is available now. The hard copy ebook is going to be available mid-December. Um, and IFDC is working on the localization program as well to get the, the translations available as soon as possible. Come January 1st, Verizon Foundation training is going to be available. And then during next year, we'll be developing content to support Verizon Professional and Verizon Leader. And I, I think that the, the kind of the last thing I would say with regards to Verizon is one of the things we found when we worked with the author group, and again, very, very global group, is that this is kind of how people have been thinking anyway, it's how consultants have been working. The key with Verizon now is that, that we've framed the discussion and we've also created something that's going to let us share that with the next generation of, of service managers. <clears throat> and um, Sandra Whittleston, who was there representing UK Academia and is on the ITSMF UK board, we're very keen to continue working with Sandra and just look at how we can work with universities and actually you know, get service management onto the curriculum. So I think I'll just um, ask one last question about conference. So Michelle, what was your best session? Uh, I really, really enjoyed um, the session that was done by Sanjeev and C. He spoke about uh, selfless um, service, uh, about how you know we can make better experience that users by making life less difficult for them. Um, I think his slide deck was really, really good fun, and he spoke very, very well. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. But uh, you know, mirroring what Simon said before. Daniel Breston's session, quite a pleasant formal session where he engaged the audience and we talked about measurements and stuff was really, really great as well. And that was one of the benefits, I, I guess, for the conference this time. It felt a lot more interactive with some of these more flexible sessions. So that was great. And what about you, Simon? Uh, well, apart from our own session, of course, but uh, but I'll refrain from saying. I think I mentioned it. I thought Sally Bog's session on on reward and recognition of staff was a was a really good message, really well worded, great uh, great empowering slides beyond that. And uh, um, I think the, the other comment was with the panel session that uh, we had we had three women in IT uh, explaining about Verism. It's, it's very good to see uh, the presentation there. Um, and I thought the panel actually worked quite well answering the things in there. So there was lots, there was lots in there, and I think yeah, the uh, the, um, the intimacy, the interaction was was really good uh, outside of the presentations. There were meetup corners and discussion zones. Um, so yeah, it felt like a pretty nice conference. Yeah, I, I think it's something that I've I've certainly seen in the last few years. Is I think the standard of, of presentations has improved immensely at, at all of the conferences that I go to, and that includes, you know, the DevOps conferences, the service management conferences. I think for me, um, there were so many sessions that I enjoyed, but probably the highlight for me was listening to Craig Johnson from NHS Digital. So Craig shared a really practical kind of journey that NHS Digital have been through to change their service management structure from kind of a traditional process-based um, structure into multi-skilled service management cells, so much, a much more agile service management approach. And they, they were noticing things like incident managers are very, very busy in the morning, in the afternoon, you know, change managers maybe they have more things to do in the afternoon. So they switched to this multi-skilled structure and they've actually been able to use their, their resources much more efficiently, but actually work with the customers um, much more efficiently and also see much better satisfaction with their service. So that was a it was a great session and um, it, was, it was standing room only. I was, uh, I was sat on the floor at the back. So it's always nice to see when, when everybody wants to, to hear those, those practical um, takeaways. So I think, the the kind of the thing to say here is you know congratulations to all of the ITSMF um, teams who organise these conferences. ITSMF chapters are run by volunteers. There's always a huge amount of effort goes into making a conference run smoothly. And having run a very small conference myself this year, I'd, I'd learned just how challenging that is. So congratulations to everybody. And I would suggest if you've got a bit of time, maybe review the ITSM17 hashtag on Twitter because there was a huge amount of on social media and also some uh, some pretty cool video clips and uh, I think you'll see some photos of 
Michelle and Simon in their devil and angel hats as well from our Siam session. So um, well worth a look, I think. So we're going to move on now and talk about another bit of industry news, which is the forthcoming launch of Siam Professional. So Scopism Limited in 2016 released the Siam Foundation Body of Knowledge. And this year um, we've had a huge team working on Siam Professional. So this is the, the more advanced content that's, that's going to support the Siam Professional training that's going to be available February 1st. 2018. Um, Sign Professional is a, a big piece of content and Simon and Michelle um, were the lead architects on, on the programme to develop it. So Simon and Michelle maybe uh, tell us a little bit about the team and the process that you used. Um, okay, so yeah, Claire said it was, a, it was a huge team. We've used the term frequently heard in cats, um, but I think we had the benefit of global uh, community and what we found was the development cycles we were able to achieve uh, benefit from uh, those time zones so you know we had teams of people developing by day and then others reviewing and then passing information around so we we created a number of sort of sub teams that would focus on particular areas and then go through re review cycles so I was just really, really impressed with the commitment. Um, you've already mentioned that these guys are all volunteers. They've got day jobs. Uh, and also the openness. You know, we, we got some fantastic messages and stories. And, and one of the things I'm most proud about with, with, the, um, with the book is that, that we, made, we were able to capture real life experiences, both the good and the bad. And people were open about sharing those. So it's for me, the anecdotes and the case studies are the real benefit of what you'll find in science professional. Yeah, the, I, th I think the approach of having lots and lots of volunteers contribute was uh, a bit of a double-edged sword. It's very hard to control and manage, but we've got such a variety of stories uh, from different countries, different environments, from consultants uh, and people that are in, right in the middle of it. And we really tried to do that from the outset to make sure that the professional would reflect on what actually is being done and, and what should be done with SIAM. Uh, and so, yeah, after uh, after some work and in shaving and then putting it all into shape, I think uh, the book is going to provide a lot of insight for people. Um, as per usual, it's not going to be a silver bullet, a how-to-do book, but there's so many examples in there of mistakes that other people have made. There's so many examples in there of, of really sometimes small things that you can do uh, that could just be that little thing that, that makes it go better. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite proud of what the whole team has achieved um, in, in this. Yeah, and I, I think it's um, it's a huge undertaking that, that you, you both did and you, you managed the team wonderfully to, to get the result. The, the Sign Professional Body of Knowledge is going to be available on the 12th of December. So it's going to be a free download from the Scopism website. Um, if you've already downloaded some of our content, you will get a, a newsletter when to let you know when it's available. Um, the hard copy book will be published, I think, early 2018 with our publishing partner, Van Heeren, um, but that, that content's going to be there. So tell us a little bit more about the team. What, what sort of countries did we have involved? What sort of companies? Um, so we had, um, I think we had Atos, Sobristeria, um, Tata Consulting, Kinetic IT, which is ourselves. Um, I can't remember all the companies. We had people from Switzerland, we had people from the US, people from India, Australia, uh, UK, Netherlands, um, and when I say Australia, different sides from Australia as well. It, it was a huge team. Um, and as Michelle said, they were all volunteers, they were all very keen in, in sharing their, uh, their knowledge. And I think that ultimately is one of the, those things that certainly energizes me within the best practices. Where, where people are sharing their experiences and, and are willing to make other people do things better uh, without immediately looking for a, for a commercial benefit around it. I think in addition to that, I think what was lovely was that people came forward and said, look, I'm a real expert in this particular area. So we had people at different stages of our roadmap who were, you know, experts in the strategy piece or knew a lot about sort of designing science ecosystems and so on. Um, so that was great that we managed to capture people in little groups. And then, of course, we're not forgetting our review team. So we had a, a review team that went through and did sort of a, a review of content. And then we had a, an end-to-end -end review. And then you've got the guys that come in with the red pen teacher-style review. 
Um, and I just think everybody really fantastically pulled together as a team and we were really quite tough on them in terms of timescales uh, and, and I was just hugely impressed and I'd love to, to thank them all uh, face to face. I'm not necessarily going to see all those people, um, which is also quite interesting when you've got like, a team at a global level. But yeah, they were fantastic and uh, I'm, I'm really, really proud, proud of what we did together. Yeah, and I think I was involved as on the outskirts really as, as a reviewer and attending some of the calls and, and one of the things that that was nice for me was sometimes these things are very consultant led but we actually had people who are working within organizations people from the customer side the service provider side and the service integrator side so um i think that the content that, that's been produced is is very balanced and it doesn't it doesn't just reflect kind of one perspective so that's that's always helpful as well um, tell us a little bit more about the the structure of the content and what's actually in the professional body of knowledge um, we picked up on on what we had done previously um, with the foundation so using the Siam roadmap which it essentially takes you on a journey you know everything from uh, defining the strategy within the organization to move to the model looking at an out outline business case uh, into the building so all of the various parts that you, you need to create so that's not just about end-to-end -end process that's that's about making sure you put governance structures in you define sort of working groups and teams you start organizational change management um, and that whole piece around implement onboarding suppliers and getting them to work together and right the way through to you know how, how do you run the ecosystem what do you do day to day so the content is very reflective of each of those stages but we explore it in much more detail and um, as I say, the, the addition to that is the plan about anecdotes that we've got in there, we can call out boxes which talk about this is a good way, this is not a good way, maybe you should buy this. So that's essentially what we've got. Yeah, and, and then on top of the roadmap, we've looked at the, the capabilities. So again, from the foundation body of knowledge, so the people capabilities, tool capabilities, and, and measurement capabilities. And we try to reflect those in each of the stage, like which capabilities are applicable. Again, what are the best pre and bad practices that we see around? So they're kind of like a thread that runs through, through the whole book. Yeah, and I think it's one of the discussions we had at the foundation level was about the fact that every Siam model is different so how you know how do we get this message across without delivering something that's too prescriptive and I think for me the balance that we've got in the professional um, content between the, the the kind of the, the theoretical stuff but then the stories that are added onto it and the examples I think that's a really nice balance in the content. It, 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 it was a very interesting discussion where uh, yeah, where someone would write something and say, well, uh, 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 it is advised to do this way, and then there would be comments, well, well, we're doing it completely different, and it's working fantastic, and it just kind of molded into this uh, option of, of these are the benefits of this side. But there is indeed a lot of different ways SIAM is being applied. Yeah, it's, um, it's absolutely true, and I, I think it's um, looking at the conference agendas, looking at the the response we've had to the launch of the Scion Foundation training I think this is a uh, you know it's, it's a topic that's that's going to grow and grow and there's there's real interest from all around the world as well so I, I think um, watch this space and make sure you download Scion Professional when it's available on the 12th of December. Um, comments about conference season from you both before we, uh, we close off this hangout um, I, I think, as I said, I, I enjoyed the whole conference experience. I liked the, the flexibility of some of the open and more active sessions. I think there was a, a really great balance of people from around the world and, and you know, professional speakers as, as well as uh, people are actually doing, um, you know, work day to day in the service management space. So, um, yeah, a great conference. Congratulations. Just reflecting what you're saying, Claire. Um, you know, it's a community effort. It's sort of team led. It's volunteers. And I think uh, ITS and UK does a fantastic job. Yeah, I think on the conference season in general, I, I really see, and, and I know we've been saying, talking about change for, for years and years, but I really feel it's almost palatable now that people are looking for new things, new approaches uh, to the new organization that has kind of almost formed around them in most cases. Um, and, and that's something that comes through in the presentations, in the conversations uh, that you're having in there. So yeah, that will be my takeaway from, from conference season or 
2017. I think you're absolutely right. There's, there's change in the air, and I think in in the service management world, we uh, evolve or die, as uh, as we say. Okay, the next episode of the ITSM crowd is on December 12th at 6 p.m., which is also the day of the Sign Professional launch. On the 12th of December, I'm going to be joined by Sigrid Janssen from IFDC and Verizon lead authors Randy Steinberg and Suzanne Van Hove to talk about Verizon content in a little bit more detail. Thank you so much to our guests today, Michelle and Simon. Thank you for everybody who's been watching and we'll see you on the next episode of the ITSM crowd. Thanks everyone. Thanks, guys.